Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 as we are playing as King Adam the First, King of England. So I believe this is the only King Adam uh, in Christian history that I can recall. England definitely didn't have any King Adams. Uh, there was a King Adam, Adam U or Adam U or something like that. Uh, he was king of Assyria, and that, and that I think is their equivalent of the name Adam. But other than that, I don't know if there's been any King Adams in all of history. It's just not a very royal name. So it's interesting to see him named uh, Adam and, and being the king here of a major Christian kingdom. Uh, but let's go and get started in today's episode. Uh, we left off in the last one gathering up our troops here uh, for the conflict against the Welsh again. And what did we get here? Uh, we got a little bit of an opinion boost. Excellent. Uh, so we're going to keep this going. We'll let it finish up here, the eight months. And then after that, we'll maybe move it to another character. Oops. I don't mean to abandon that. All right. So two, two more days left to gather. And then we're going to split these guys up as we typically do. And we'll probably have to have a, a decent sized, like, uh, you know, engaging army. And then what we'll probably want to do is have like two sieging armies is what I'm thinking here. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and create them. Uh, we'll create the whole sieging army first, so we know what what size we want for this one, and then we'll split that. So basically the same as as we typically do, guys. So just go ahead and take out all these levies here. Again, probably try and get them down to I don't know, maybe like 3,500 men, maybe 4,000. What can we get over here in all these provinces? So if they're not helping with sieges, then we could probably get away with about 4,000 men. Yeah, we'll, we'll do 4,000. That should hopefully be enough to fight whatever he's got. And she does seem to have a good number of troops, about 2,500 men. Of course, that's nowhere near comparable to our numbers here. All right, what are we at? We're at 4,900. We're going to have to start doing these larger size ones. We don't want to be here all day. All right, so just about down. Let's get a couple of these small ones out here, and then we'll be good to go. All right, excellent. Okay, so let's go and select these guys. Uh, we're gonna bring them here and see if we can't get them to engage us in the hills. Uh, although we would be, we'd be defending there, right? No, they would be defending. Okay, so they're gonna get there first. So let's just move here and then we'll see where they go. And then we'll split this army up. Now, yeah, this shouldn't be too difficult of a conflict. Uh, we got uh, Earl Hugh in charge of our main force, that works. Now let's go ahead and split off this army, and you know what, we're just going to half it. Split in half, I think that would be good. Alright, and then, let's see who we got commanding here. So this is our second best guy. We do not have very good marshals, do we? We don't have great, great marshals, unfortunately. We'll put that guy in charge since he has the uh, military engineer trait, and then with this guy here, we'll just use the best one. Best one available. Alright, so let's go ahead and get these placed to attack some of their provinces. We'll go after that one first, obviously. And then with this one, we'll just go siege down this province here. While this guy is gonna kinda shadow this army here and see if we can't get them to engage us at a good point. Cause we have similar numbers now. Uh, cousin taken prisoner, okay. So yeah, we'll see if we can't get them to engage us in like a defensive position. We'll see where they go. Really, we just need them to enter our territory. We'll come on over to this hill here. No, no, we're going to take attrition there. A little bit of battle going on right there. It has nothing to do with us. So we did construct another building. So, yeah, I think what we need to do is probably go trying to have them engage us right here. Where they come down here, uh, if they attack us here and we're defending, then we would be the... Uh, We'd be the one to get the defensive bonus there. Okay, he's gonna go out to sea. All right, well, I'm okay with that. Let him, uh, let him go siege whatever he wants, and we'll attack him down there while we take all his stuff here. That's how we'll we'll win this conflict. But again, it does have a uh, similar numbers to us. Uh, we don't have that many more troops. Again, we'd probably win any battle against him unless he had like a really fantastic commander. But as long as he doesn't get like significant defensive bonuses, I don't think it'll be much of an issue. Uh, did we seize control? We did. We got one of the heirs. All right, excellent. All right, well, let's go ahead and take this province next. Uh, we have a total of three months left to get that one. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, prisoners we just captured. Uh, so uh, we also still have her. Uh, I think I was trying to ransom her off and he didn't have the money. 
Uh, we could get a weak hook on the French King. If we don't already have one, we do not. That could be useful. I think that's what we'll do. It's going to get the weak hook on the French King. And then we'll see what we have for options here. It looks like this one we can just, this woman here, we can just release and just get a, a weak hook. I suppose that's fine. And her, this is his heir. So yeah, we don't want to release her, I believe. Now, hopefully I didn't just release the wrong one. I guess we'll take a look real quick. I don't think that was his heir. Let's just take a look. It's just one of his heirs, obviously. Oh, you know what? That might have been... I'm not entirely sure. Uh, hopefully I didn't release the heir, because uh, then I'll tick that down some. Definitely not worth what we traded it for. All right, we got another notable guest arriving here, and we did get that weak hook. Uh, doesn't seem to have effect this, so yeah, we didn't release his, his spouse. All right, excellent. All right, so we're just going to siege down the rest of these provinces here. We'll wait to see where he lands. Looks like he's going to go over this way, so let's go ahead and meet him there. Uh, see where we can go where we're not going to get hit by supply. We'll go right here. And then we'll see where he lands. Remember, he's going to be fairly weak here. He will arrive there first, so we don't actually want to attack him. He's going to go right back out to sea because he knows that if we were to engage him, he would not do well. Of course, he will be defending hills, so it's just not worth attacking there. All right, so we'll just we'll just stay here. Uh, he's not doing anything right now. He's not sieging. Now, he could come over here and attack this unit uh, if he wanted to. Uh, let's go and speed this up. He's probably just going to sit here until he loses that modifier, but then he's going to go right back out. Okay. Uh, so we've gotten another province taken. Let's go and get the next one. Again, shouldn't it be too challenging of a conflict, especially if he's not going to fight us at all. Getting some money, getting some prisoners. Overall, should make a good profit from this. Now we're at 84% right now. Let's go and take a look at the, the new prisoners that we just got. See if they're worth any money. Uh, so this would just get us a favor here. Not really that useful. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could. There's nothing else to really do with her. And then with this uh, fellow, this fellow right here, let's just see here, make sure he doesn't have good martial or, or good prowess or anything like that. Uh, he would not accept this ransom offer. Okay, we'll just get the hook then. Okay, uh, so one u usable strategy with the the hooks is that there is a a stewardship a stewardship perk that i think is pretty early in the tree in fact it might be the beginning of the tree okay so we got an event we got a perk we got a couple things here uh but yeah you can you can actually sell your uh any hooks you have uh you can sell the the hooks back to the character so it's a way of making money and you can make an absolute ton of money that way guys if you get that perk uh, you, see, you see how many uh, hooks that we get that we just don't have a use for. Uh, often, they're foreign hooks. And with those ones, it, you can just make a ton of profit. You just sent your, your spy master out to, to find uh, any secrets, and you just move them around, and, and he'll just get hooks, and, and you can earn a lot of money from that. Uh, it's almost a little bit kind of gamey in a way because it's so easy to make insane amounts of money. Uh, so we have an event here, a shady discussion. I am passing through the castle gardens for a morning walk when a soft breeze carries the voices of two people. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, uh, but the other one is uh, Sibylla. Uh, to my ear, the two courtiers are talking to each other in a secluded spot nearby, frequently gl glancing around to make sure nobody is listening. While it is hard for me to make out most of their words from a distance, as it is clear that their discussion relates to Prince Richard. Okay, so remember Prince Richard is our brother heir and steward is our heir because we haven't had any children of our own just yet my wife is not pregnant uh, we haven't been married very long though and let's see what the different options are so we say i must warn richard would be strange since we know we don't even know what they're talking about it could be talking about how handsome and sexy he is maybe talking about how how glorious his beard is for all we know uh if only i could get a bit closer uh, and then we would try and use our intrigue to get closer which would likely fail because we're not exactly you know we don't have exactly a very high intrigue we're terrible at it we can say i must know what they're hiding whatever the cost and this would result in us getting dread and then we're going to torture the information out of them oh wow not a high chance of succeeding either or you say i'm sure it's probably nothing important and then we just lose dread okay we don't have any dread to lose let's see what exactly would we do we're pretty patient so we probably wouldn't do anything rash yeah i don't think we'd do do this 
And I must know they're hiding. Yeah, these are all very rash. But would we warn him? We have a, a decent relationship with our brother. I assume we would warn him at least. Yeah, I guess that's what we'll do. Yeah, I don't see us doing either of these, that's for sure. So we'll just do that one. And our brother will like us even more. Uh, so we have finished up the conflict here. Uh, you know what, let's go and get the perk first. And then we'll, uh, you know, finish that treaty up. Uh, here we'll have multiple choices. You know, the diplomat, August, or the family hierarch. Now, we don't really say that there's any traits that lead us down any particular direction. I suppose you could say that our Gagarius might make us more diplomatic, uh, so you can make that argument. Uh, but really, overall, I mean, I don't, I don't really think that, uh, I think any of these would, would fit for our character. Overall, I found this uh, perk tree to be a little bit less useful than two, the other two here. Uh, you do get some, some boosted opinion bonuses with... Uh, your uh, fellow rulers, uh, so that's always helpful. Uh, plus, the foreign affairs gets a little bit more effective, uh, which you can have your, you know, is one of the chancellor jobs. Uh, overall, though, I mean, you get more, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get more diplomacy skill from any alliances we have. Uh, you can do the proposed alliance without a marriage. I suppose that is helpful, uh, especially because of the fact we don't have any kids yet, so we can't arrange uh, marriages for any alliances. And and the one advantage of that, of course, is that. Uh, when you're marrying your kids off, you don't really have to consider alliances because you could just propose an alliance without the marriage. So there is that one, which I think that's probably one of the best perks in this tree. Uh, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of other ones uh, that are that useful. I guess you got this one. This is a new CB. Uh, but overall, yeah, I don't really think that uh, many of these are all that useful. This would allow us to get uh, whales conquered a little bit quicker, especially this one as well. Fabricating the claims, that would be helpful. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a bad tree. Uh, but uh, I think we might go for this one here. Uh, we do not have a lot of prestige. And I feel like Adam cares about his reputation among others. And right now he has a very terrible reputation among others. So uh, somebody else suggested going down this route in the comments. And I do think this one would be fitting. In addition, we've kind of made some choices that have gone down that route already. You know, when we went with our legacy here, you know, we went with the desirable match, the glory route. And so, yeah, you could make an argument that maybe this is the route he's kind of going, a high prestige route. Uh, he's no longer in the negative prestige, by the way. I did forget that we had that that war that got us into the positive. Uh, but overall, still, he, he's not he's not the most famous or prestigious guy, and I kind of feel like he would care about that. He'd be patient in doing so, for sure. But yeah, I think he would uh, want a good reputation. Uh, so that's what we're going to get, guys. I just think it would be a little bit more useful than this one would be. Uh, and which one should we start with, I guess, is the question. Sway Scheme Power? Uh, yeah, I guess we could do that one so we get it done quicker. Yeah, we'll do that, since we're not going to get anything for this because we don't have any dread. Okay, uh, so anything else that we need to be aware of over here before we continue our war? It looks like we're good to go. All right, so he is coming back here to tank that province. This is in the hills, uh, so we would get the defensive bonus. We don't need to do it though, uh, so I was trying to think if there was really going to be any advantage of, of uh, attacking him and not just ending the war, but I think that's the best way to do it, just going to force our demands here. Alright, excellent. Uh, so we did get a little bit more fame, and we have taken control of that county. Uh, let's go ahead and disband our army here. So I think we're just going to go ahead and let a vassal take care of it for us. So I had a lot of questions in one of the previous videos, and what I consider uh, when I'm giving these, these titles out. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this all decided here. We're going to do non-lowborns. Excuse me, we wanted to do, yeah, not a lowborn, adults. And I think that's good. And then we'll kind of look at who we're going to give this to. Uh, but in regards to what I consider when I give titles out, there's a couple things. First of all, opinion is a pretty important one. Obviously, you don't want to give titles out to somebody who absolutely despises you. Uh, you give it out to somebody who, who hates you, and, and then you're just creating a potential problem in the future uh, because they're going to join factions and, and cause you issues. Now, opinion doesn't have to be super high. It doesn't need to be, like, you know, plus 50 or anything like that because, remember, you are going to get opinion boost for granting that title to them. They're going to be happy with you because you, cause you gave them a title. Uh, in addition to that, you also need to consider their traits. Uh, so these could very well impact their opinion. Uh, so, you know, some of them only apply to lieges, so therefore you wouldn't know that it's going to impact your opinion unless you looked at this. Alright, so here we have an ambitious character, it's a good example. 
Uh, so right now we got a plus eight with him, which is like, okay, that's that's good enough score uh, to give him some titles, but he's ambitious, guys. So that means you're going to get a negative 15 once we are his liege. Out right now, we're not his liege. He's unlanded, so we're not getting that penalty. Uh, but the moment we give this to him, we would. So that would offset uh, a big po uh, part of the, the points that we're, we're going to get for, for granting him a title. Uh, so you always want to consider the, the, uh, these uh, traits as well, uh, because they are going to impact opinion, and it will impact how they act. So an ambitious character is far more likely to join factions. Uh, so you always want to consider the, the traits. So in addition to opinion and traits, you're also going to want to consider uh, their family. So for, for instance, I mean, we're just to click on any character here. Uh, let's say that this guy here is set to inherit his brother's titles here. His brother has a, a earldom right here. Let's just say that brother, instead of having one earldom, had three earldoms. And let's say he also didn't have any heirs. He had no children, and so his brother was set to inherit his titles. Then we might not want to give him a count, you know, give him a county because what if his brother dies and then he inherits it? Now he goes from where he would have just had three counties. Now he has four counties. So we just strengthened a potentially powerful vassal. Uh, so that's one thing to consider is you know what they're set to inherit, uh, and you'll also want to consider that when it comes to if they're gonna you know have a problem with maybe their heir. So in this case, this character has uh, no children, uh, so his heir could come from outside the realm. Uh, so you want to look at like his siblings, you know, Hoover would likely become his heir if he doesn't have any children, uh, again, which would probably be his siblings. Uh, his wife could also uh, become the heir, of course. Uh, so you want to consider, you know, is this county going to end up going outside your realm? And again, that is based on your crown authority. If your crown authority is high enough, then it's not a problem. Uh, but if you have like mid-range crown authority or lower uh, crown authority, then it is a problem. You don't want him to die after you give him this this county especially if he's like a knight or something like that so he's likely to die and then it goes to his brother who's already you know a count of of france uh, because what's going to happen is that county you just gave to this guy is now going to go to france essentially it'll be a vassal in france and thus it'll be under the king of france uh, so that's always stuff you want to consider but that's pretty much it uh for me i also do a little bit of role playing sometimes like if a knight's done a really good job in battles uh, and I'm proud of him, uh, then maybe I'll, uh, I'll grant him a title. Uh, but other than that, just opinions, traits, and inheritance. Those are the three things you want to consider when it comes to, to granting titles out. Now, in this case, this is going to be a little bit of a role play uh, aspect because I'm going to, to give it to this giant here, which he doesn't like us. He's also ambitious. Uh, so he's a terrible character to give a uh, to, to give this this uh, title out to. In fact, here he's impatient. This also is going to decrease his opinion of us. So he's already negative 42. Uh, so if we grant this out to him, he is not going to uh, be a good vassal. But he's a giant and I just want to give him a title. Uh, so this is really just a role play aspect. has nothing to do with the, what is a good option here. This is a terrible option for, for a character. Again, we'll still be in the negative even with this plus 40. He is not going to like us. Oh, we're, we're in the positive. Okay, that's not too bad. I thought it would be. Why am I having trouble with this? I hate how that thing, it just doesn't click when you want it to. Uh, so we give him titles. Yeah, plus 12 now. Uh, and that's probably because we might be getting some bonuses uh, as a liege that we weren't before. But you can see that the impatient is going to drop us negative 5. Uh, the ambitious is dropping, dropping us down negative 15. Not rightful liege is negative 5. Uh, so overall... It is uh, uh, not a great uh, opinion there, uh, so not the great greatest choice, but I'm trying to get this guy to have some kids. I want some giant's blood uh, here in, in Wales, uh, so that's why we made that decision. All right, so we've given the title. I don't think we have anything else we have to do. Uh, I suppose we can go and start working on the next uh, you know, the next claim. Now, the, the treaty that we're going to have with the Welsh, because uh, remember, they're all under the same lord here, uh, so we're going to have that until 1114, so five-year treaty, and that means that uh, we'll have to... Declare war on somebody else for a little while. Um, that's all we're going to be able to do in Wales for a time. Uh, so I think we might go after Scotland next, guys. Yeah, we have not warred against Scotland for some time. I think it makes sense. Uh, it looks like Brittany is having some issues here again. Uh, this is a peasant revolt, and they're going to lose it. She's just having a lot of trouble. It always happens that way. Whenever I've got a good inheritance coming down, and, and they'll just lose all of their titles before I even uh, get the chance to... Uh, to get the uh, to get the inheritance, uh, so I think that this would be. Let me just take a look here. I'm I'm considering this one, 
I think we might actually do this one though. Uh, development's a little bit higher there. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do this one. Uh, so we'll go after that county. Let's go ahead and fabricate a claim here. It's gonna take some time because again, our archbishop is pretty cruddy. Have we had a good archbishop in this entire series? I feel like we haven't. Uh, speaking of the archbishop, we just improved his opinion even further. He's now at plus 92, and so we're making uh, pretty good money and pretty good uh, levies from him. It is time to go ahead and try and improve opinion with somebody else. Uh, maybe the duke here? Uh, our chancellor really doesn't like us very much. I suppose it would make sense to try and improve the opinion with him. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go and try and sway him. I'd also like to do a little bit, uh, you know, a personal scheme against our own spouse here. Maybe make her fall in love with us, try and romance her. I can see Adam doing that. Uh, but again, let's try and get these opinions up first of uh, some of our, our powerful vassals. And our wife is pregnant. Excellent. I cannot wait to hold the baby in my arms. Okay, so we'll be having our first child. Uh, we'll hope for a son. We do have low county uh, control here, it seems. A little bit surprised that that got lowered. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and, and fix it then. Uh, we'll get our, our marshal on that stat. Okay, so he'll improve that for us. Uh, we we'll wait to spend our money until we get a little bit more, and then we'll we'll go back to constructing buildings. Uh, though we might want to take a look at our knight situation, because it seems like our knights are kind of cruddy. In our recent communication, my chancellor expressed a want to focus on his ambitions and interests more. I could make sure that our coming letters contain more on a topic close to his heart. All right, we'll see what he likes. Uh, he's lazy, temperate, and gregarious, and he's a charismatic negotiator. So we could say, uh, I think he likes to focus on diplomatic matters. Sure, yeah, that would probably work. The ruling of the realm surely interests him. No, probably not. I believe nothing ties him like a good book. So yeah, I think that this is clearly the diplomatic matters. Or we hope, anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our knights real quick. And we'll see how the numbers look. Yeah, not great, guys. Definitely feel like we could have better knights. So I think that's what we're going to spend the money on. I could also increase our levy size up some if we wanted to as well. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and, and, and focus on the the higher end of the knights first. Alright, so we'll send it off, try and get three more good knights. And yeah, he liked that. So that'll improve his opinion by 10. Uh, he's still pretty low though, so we'll keep this going. Uh, we're still at negative three. Uh, knight has arrived. Let's take a look at him, see if he's any good. Yeah, he's pretty darn good actually. Let's go ahead and recruit him to court. He's a handsome fellow. And he's a master hunter. I think he would also make a very good vassal someday, maybe. If he does good as a knight, maybe we'll uh, give him some titles. And yeah, that's the guy we just hired. So hopefully you get two more good ones. So that uh, for our war against Scotland, we'll have some very high level knights kind of help us out. Uh, as far as how many troops they have, uh, it's going to be a little, lot bigger war than what we've seen here against the Welsh. Uh, they're just starting out with 3,300, and then they don't seem to have any alliances, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, the queen did lose here, so that's unfortunate for her. That's going to reduce her control over whatever county those those rebels popped up in, since it was just a uh, it was just a peasant rebellion. Uh, let's go and recruit this guy to court. Now, he's not the type that we'd probably want to give. Yeah, he's an awful dude. He's not the type we'll want to give a title to, but he should make a good knight. And what is this? I've good th heard good things about you. I am interested in starting a, a written conversation. I hope that this letter finds you willing, for I am waiting for your swift reply. Do you think uh, the King of Scotland got word of uh, us trying to declare war on him? Because, yeah, now he's trying to be friendly with us. All right, we do not want to do that. Oh, yeah, we can politely decline. Uh, I don't know if our character would say that. We're about to declare war on him, too, though, so starting to exchange letters doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Hi there. I guess we can do this one here. Frame, you know, our character cares a lot about his own prestige, so. Yeah, maybe that's the one he'd do. Again, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to start getting friendly with somebody you plan on declaring war on. Uh, so we had a daughter, uh, so we'll have to pick a name for her. I think we'll name her Mary. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, somebody told me in the comments the way you pronounce this is Edoc, uh, her name, our, our wife's name. So that's how I'm gonna pronounce it for now on. Uh, if, if, if that's not correct, then, then uh, just post it down in the comments below, we'll change that up. So yeah, we'll, we'll pronounce it Edoc. And yeah, she just had a, our first child, a daughter, and she is our heir, so unless we have a son, then this will be the character that we'll be playing as. So with that in mind, we'll likely 
trainer up ourselves, though our learning is pretty garbage, so I don't know if that's the best option. Uh, and we were able to sway the Duke Aaron, uh, but his opinion is still pretty low, so we'll keep it going. Yeah, we'll keep it going. Also, got an opinion boost with Prince Richard, which I don't know what that was about because I didn't read it. I was automatically assuming it had to do with Duke Aaron. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know that that did. So we had another knight arrive. Let's go and take a look at him. And he's the best one so far. I think because he's very strong. He's also got some good commander traits, though. His marshal's pretty damn low. Not entirely sure why his marshal is so low. Is it because of his just a really low base? Yeah, it's a very low base. And just overall not getting anything to improve it. So he wouldn't make a good commander despite the traits. Uh, but yeah, we'll go, go and hire him as a, as a knight. So yeah, we should have pretty decent, uh, pretty decent knights now. Uh, we'll just take a look and see exactly where we're sitting at. Uh, he hasn't been put in here just yet. Maybe we need to give this a second. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't been put in here. Yeah, we're not doing bad. Our worst knight is is uh, level 11 there, prowess 11. So yeah, that's not too bad at all. Uh, social manipulation. The first time it happened, I barely even gave it a moment's thought. But my vassal mayor. Mm, Blavy? Blave? Something like that? <laughs> I'm probably butchering that. Uh, has grown bolder. His challenges no longer pass unnoticed among my vassals. He is testing my limits. The, oth the others are sure to follow unless I give him a taste of his own medicine. Okay. Uh, so, let's just take a look. Uh, so, yeah, he's one of our vassals. Of course, he's a mayor. Uh, we can say, I will ignore him and steal his ideas. Uh, this would gain us 50 diplomacy lifestyle points. And have a couple different possible outcomes, including getting an opinion with them. So if we are able to manipulate him, okay, I see. Now we say mocking his bother bothersome nature will shut him up. I don't think we would do that. Yeah, I just don't feel like we would do that as being gregarious. Uh, all problems will be blamed on him, uh, and you know we're banking on that he likes. Uh, people, he wants people to think well of him. So I guess we kind of should base this off of his traits, is, is which ones will be most successful, I suppose. Or you say, how dare you challenge your king? Not very diplomatic, but, effect, but effective nonetheless. So yeah, we definitely wouldn't do that one, obviously, because we are gregarious. So we have to do one of these three here. You know, none of these really, like, you know, fit with... I, I think all of them are, you know, they're all diplomatic ones, so... Yeah, I guess any of them fit with gregarious, I suppose. I mean... It doesn't really seem like this is uh, the gregarious thing to do, but again, this is part of the dip diplomacy chain. Again, none of them really make a whole lot of sense, I think, for our traits. I can't really see any that, that make the most sense uh, for us. Uh, I mean, we are a patient character, so you could say that we would just steal his stuff. You know, you're just, you know, patiently letting him come up with everything, and then you steal it. Uh, I, I don't know guys. I guess we again we should probably just base this off his traits and, and none of them really indicate that he would be Like it really doesn't seem like he cares at all what other people think about him with the callousness since he's indifferent to other people So I assume he would not care about this one or this one Yeah, uh, so we're just gonna go for this one. I ignore him and steal his ideas. Uh, hey, that was kind of a tough choice It wasn't really anything that was uh, indicating that we'd go one way over the other. Uh, let's go and get something built here. Uh, we can do the regimental grounds here. This will increase our total levies. So we're going to build that. Uh, and that'll be all the gold that we have. And it looks like it worked. Uh, Master of Suppression. Whenever the mayor has, has raised his voice to speak, I have yawned, turned my attention somewhere else, or outright interrupted him. As the other began to follow my example, uh, the mayor grew more and more hesitant. Now he remains quiet, eyes cast low. So we successfully manipulated him. You can say that this is part of diplomacy, manipulating, you know, that's that's part of uh, being diplomatic, I suppose, is the ability to manipulate others. Uh, it does kind of seem to fit more in the intrigue than anything else. Uh, but again, I guess because it's social, so that's the, uh, the reason why they have this as a, a diplomatic thing. Uh, but the point is, we, get a, uh, we cook on him and we increase his opinion. I don't know what use that will have since you know, we can't modify his mayor, so we can't really modify how much money he pays us or anything like that. Uh, we did get some extra fame. Excellent. So I think that is now getting us our first knight from fame. And we also got that secular opinion boost, so that'd be helpful. Uh, anything that we can do here? Uh, we still haven't ransomed off that princess, so we're going to want to do that. Uh, make a little bit of money from that. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's go ahead and... I guess I could have just did it from there. I don't know how much he's willing to pay. Not enough. Not enough. We're going to keep her until he, we can get a little bit more money from him. Alright, so we're almost done with the claim, and then we'll declare war, and we'll 
We'll tax Scotland. I want to move this uh, over a little bit closer, though. Hold up. Looks like we had another call to war, which we might be forced to help out. Let me just see here. So this is a, a war with, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, it's a, a little bit of a rebellion here. Uh, and what, what exactly is the war for? That's what I want to know here. Let's just take a look. Uh, so she actually has two conflicts going right now. I think we're gonna have to help in both of these conflicts, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I'll just say we'll go ahead and accept it. Um, it's it's unfortunate, but again, this is it's one of the, the yeah the parts that I always find myself uh, struggling with is that we have a really good uh, a marriage and we're about to get a bunch of land and and then they do everything they can to lose that land before I'm able to uh, before I'm able to get it. Uh, let's go to move this down here now, so we won't be doing the war against Scotland until we finish this up. I just hate that we're we're spending so much time, you know, being concentrated on helping our allies right now, uh, just war after war after war uh, that we've had to do uh, to help either Brittany or the Kingdom of Leon. Uh, it's it's unfortunate we haven't really been able to do our own conflicts very much, but you can't not help them because then you're just this is all our future land, so we're just giving these counties up if we do that. Uh, we did increase the control... Nope, that's not what we did. Okay, I was thinking that was, but apparently I didn't read it good enough. Alright, so we're just waiting now until we finish gathering up here. Here we go. Let's go ahead and get these guys separated. Again, just kind of separating the way we always do. Just splitting off, you know, half of the army to go siege down provinces. And we'll just do all the big levies here just to get it done. Let's get these guys split off a little bit quicker. Uh, how many do we want here? Let me just double check here. Uh, we could probably go up to 4,000 actually. I think I pulled a little bit too back, too many back. Let's go like that, and then we'll just get rid of some of this, some of the lower ones here. There we go. That looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and select this guy. Uh, he should have. Is this the? Uh, yeah, this is the best guy that we have. Uh, overall, we don't have very good marshals uh, right now. Uh, very good commanders. They're all pretty cruddy. Uh, so let's see where we want to do battle. I don't see any enemy armies except for that 488, which is now attempting to go across the sea. Might have to. Yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to catch this guy. We're gonna try because uh, yeah, I don't want to have to bring troops back home. And then with this army, let's go ahead and split it. Split it in half. And then we're gonna want to have this guy appointed the military engineer, so we can speed this up. And then with the other army here. We'll grant him whoever the best guy is. Yeah, this guy right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these guys moving to siege down provinces. I would like to finish up this conflict first, so that's what we're going to work on. And where is this army here? Alright, so I think it's, yeah, that one's moving, so this is the one we want to come over here. We'll take both of those two provinces and get this, this rebellion done first. Now, as far as, like, who she's fighting here, so this is the Rebellion. Now, this one here, which we are not a part of, uh, yeah, this is one where Shu is pulled in as an ally, so we don't need to be concerned about that one at all. It's really just this Rebellion, essentially. Okay, I wasn't sure because, yeah, it was a little bit confusing to me when I first saw it. Alright, so they're, they're attempting to, to take her, her throne, which would be very unfortunate. Uh, that's the whole reason why we married her, was to get this, this, uh, this land. Again, it's just she's like she's doing everything in her power to, to lose the land. Uh, it kind of sucks. Uh, we did win this little battle over here. We got us 21% war score. Interesting. Is that because we took control of somebody? No, it's just from that battle being won. Okay. Um, I don't think there's any other battles that we did. No. Uh, I think that was the only one, and, and we were able to uh, get 21% war score from it. Uh, so there's only really these sieges here now. I'm just trying to see if there's anywhere we can safely go. Hey, they don't have any troops, so this should be pretty easy. They thought they were going to get an easy win, uh, but nope. This is not how this is going to go down, because she has a powerful ally in the King of England, her husband. Uh, so, not entirely sure what they're thinking on this this rebellion, cause, or this trying uh, attempt to take her throne, because uh, clearly not going to work out. All right, Infiltrators. This is another attempt to increase his opinion. 95 gold, it only increases the progress that is not worth it at all, especially because we're almost done. Somebody converted to English, excellent. The Duke, okay, the Duke of East Anglia. That is, of course, our brother-in-law. And 
We have finished up getting that claim. Excellent, so we'll have to pay for that. And that means that we'll be able to declare war as soon as we're done with this conflict over here. And we'll probably disband our army and then have to bring them back up here. So it's just kind of delaying all of our conflicts, just helping out our allies. Uh, but she's just in a very vulnerable position overall. Uh, she's not in a great position. Uh, so we actually have a little enemy army here. It's not much, uh, but it's something. So let's go ahead and... I don't even know if we'll need to fight them or not. We'll stay here for right now and see if this is... Yeah, we'll go ahead and attack them. Uh, it's unnecessary. And we did not uh, sway the, do the duke, so we'll have to do it one more time. He's going to attempt to leave, but he won't get out of here in time. Uh, that'll likely finish the war off a little bit quicker, since we would have had to wait for that siege, which was going to take some time. And heresy continues to spread and Christian him. And we'll have to keep taking a look at that princess to see if we can get the money for her. Alright, so we did win. Finishes up. I can't make peace. That's right. We have to wait until she does so. Give it a little bit of time. And we'll take a look and see how our knights did. Okay, nothing really of note that happened there. So yeah, we're just waiting for this this war. I guess we'll get the... Uh, well, maybe not. Uh, so that conflict is done. Let's go ahead and disband our armies. And then we'll have to move our rally points up to here. And we'll give it a little bit of time before we do anything here. We can ransom... Uh, this is a ransom offer for her. It's 20 gold, uh, which I think we get we can get a lot more than that let's decline maybe it's not uh, maybe there's not more we can get but I want to make sure guys all right so that hmm maybe because I just declined it won't let me do it again now let's see what we can get for these two characters he would not be willing to accept that one so we'll just have to gain the weak hook how about for this character here still not willing to accept that one either unfortunately they're just not important enough characters It'll be helpful getting hooks against them since eventually they'll be in... Well, that'll be a long time for now. I suppose those hooks will, will expire by then. All right, let's see if we can get the money now. See, it's it's a 50. That's what I thought. So, yeah, he owes us a lot more money. I'm sorry, man. You're not even giving me half of what she's worth? No, thank you. All right, so we'll just give it like a, a month here. Uh, wait till we get into December, and then we'll declare war on the King of Scotland. Uh, so let's go declare war on him for our claims. And that's the only one we have, of course. It's going to be at 90 prestige to do this. Obviously, his numbers are quite a bit inferior. These, these are much lower than they were before as well. All right, so we can call our own allies in. I don't really feel like this is necessary. And, you know, while we've been helping them out, and I would like to, you know, obviously get, uh, get something out of this alliance... At the same time, I don't really want to weaken either of them. They need to focus on defending themselves. Uh, there's really no point on pulling these guys in with their very weak armies and just weakening them uh, where we're going to have to go help them later anyways. Uh, I want them to, to remain as strong as possible. So we're not going to call them in. Again, it's completely necessary. So I think it's, it's best to fight this on our own. He will pull some people in, but yeah, they won't, they won't be large enough. Now we're looking at a small fraction, very small fraction of our army here, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and, again, create ourselves a couple different armies here. And let's we'll take out all the, the big armies to make this easier. And maybe like another... Yeah, there we go. Alright, excellent. So let's go ahead and take this guy and get him moving up to here. And then we'll take this army here and split them in half. Same as usual. All right, so with this one, let's give them... Um, I wanted to give them that one, so we're going to actually have to switch this out here. All right. And then have these guys go after... Let's see where we want them to go. We want them to go after the, the, the easiest one. So this one will go after that province right there, the war goal. While this guy here... We just want to select that guy. It's going to go after this province, because it's a level 3, so it takes... A lot more time. Uh, so my, my wife is once again absent from our chambers as night falls. She has been distant lately, lost in thought and rarely seen at court. Am I not to her satisfaction? Is she simply busy? Or could she be warming somebody else's bed? So we can confront her. We can say her every move will be watched. Or she would never disrespect the sanctity of our marriage. Well, we're not like the most trusting guy. We're patient and gregarious, so I feel like we would do this. 
Yeah, I feel like we'd do this one. I think that's for the best. I'm trying. I don't know if that used the the find secret option. It did. So we're gonna try and find the secrets against her. So yeah, we'll do that one. We'll let it keep going. We'll see if she's got a secret lover. That'd be good to know. Uh, like, is this daughter ours? Is Princess Mary our child? We don't really know. Or are we just being paranoid? Uh, which definitely could be the case as well. So yeah, I don't really think we need to go out looking for them, stomping around looking for them. Uh, we could just do these sieges. But why not? Let's go ahead and see if we can't find them. Chase them down. Uh, now, we don't want them to attack us. We can't let them get behind us, of course. We'll try and go up along the coast here. Oh, yeah. We're going to take attrition if we do that. All right, so in this case, we'll probably just go ahead and siege some stuff down. Yeah, we'll just siege down right here. It'll take five months, but yeah. If he doesn't come attack us, which he very well might not. And yeah, we almost have that siege done. One went pretty quick. Uh, so let's go ahead and siege here next. Though that is a hill. You know what? Let's just do the plains. Let's avoid getting attacked here on the hill with a fairly weak army. All right, so we're just waiting for these two to be done. This is two months and four months left. Uh, I don't know where his army is and why he hasn't come after us yet. Uh, we do have some wars happening here. Here he is. There's the enemy army right there. Uh, so we'd have to go chase him down. I don't know where the rest of his force is. Uh, how is he looking on this siege? Three months before he gets that done. All right, uh, so we'll have to probably march down there. Yeah, okay. I don't know if we can get there in time. Uh, there is another war going on here in our lands. Well, they are vassals fighting each other, I assume. All right, so let's go ahead and get the next one. We can do monthly prestige per powerful vassal in the council. That'll be super helpful since we do typically keep our powerful vassals on the council. Uh, so overall, we should earn uh, pretty good prestige. Uh, a question of loyalty. She is with child and... She and I should be overjoyed. However, she has been acting strange, and I cannot shake the feeling that something is wrong. She claims I am the father, but she has lied to me many times before. So we say she must tell me. And, and again, because we're patient, we wouldn't do that. Say so I will look into this discreetly, which I thought we were already doing. Uh, but yeah, that's what we'll do. And uh, we'll see if we're successful or not. Uh, we'll have to see if we can find some evidence on this. And another rebellion happening down here. We have finished up the siege. This one's the, the important one, obviously. I have another potential hostile army there. Okay, well, let's just go and siege this one next. Let's see what they do. Oh uh, yeah, we'll continue going down this way. I don't think know that we'll make it there in time. I don't know. Three months. We should make it there in three months. Uh, a sneaking suspicion. You should sit down, my dear. There's real concern in Queen Edek's eyes. After drawn out silence, she finally admits it. And Nico is the true father of my child. I'm sorry for banging the desk right there. So she was cheating on us. Wow. Okay. So. You can say this secret must stay between us. Or everyone will know of your fidelity. Yeah, I say we, we should do, we would do this one probably. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know why we'd do this one. If we're, we're all about our own prestige, and obviously we're not trying to hurt our dynasty, but at the same time, there's nothing more damaging to your dynasty than uh, the potential that your your children are not legitimate. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of feel like we would do this one. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I'm guessing that, that our daughter is also not our child. I don't think that's going to be considered, though. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do now. Uh, so, Unfaithful, now that the whole story is out in the open, my wife and her skirt chaser are about to face the consequences of their actions. So, I could consider divorcing her, giving her a taste of her own medicine. I think that's exactly, well, yeah, I mean, here's the issue. I mean, this is still her heir. But yeah, if she has any sons and we divorce her... Yeah, I mean, the, the whole point is to get Brittany, of course. And there's no guarantee we will, because if she has a son... Hmm. Yeah, we're in kind of a pickle here. Maybe I should have spent a little bit of time initially to, to romance her, rather than focus on other characters. I guess you could probably take the blame on me, or put the blame on me. But I've always kind of been a bit against that, the idea of ever putting the blame on somebody else, when somebody else is 
uh, is the one cheating. Uh, I've always felt like, you know, you could say, you know, they got this reason or that reason, but really what it comes down to is that they're the one who made the decision to uh, to cheat on their spouse, and I don't really care what the reasons are. Uh, they're the ones that are uh, fully at fault for that. Uh, so, I mean, we could say all day, oh, I should have did this, I should have spent more time with her. Uh, but really what it comes down to is we've been married for a couple of years and she's already cheating around, uh, messing around on me. Anyways, I'm not I'm not sure what to do here, man. I feel like we'd be willing to forgive her. Like, I'm going to go ahead and, like, reveal that that child's not mine because it's not. But I feel like we would uh, we'd forgive her. But would we forgive the guy that, that did this? I think not. I think a Nico, well, he needs to die. Now, I don't know where he's at. I know he's in Aragon. Uh, but that's not, that'd be here. All right, maybe we'll have to go through, like, all the characters that we, you know, just kind of skip back on this till we can go all the way back to him. It might take a little while. There's Adam, there's her again. Yeah, we're just gonna see if we can't find him. Here he is. So who is this guy? So he's a guest in her court. How's he related? Okay, so it says De Aragon, uh, but that's just his dynasty name. Okay, I was thinking it was he was from Aragon. Uh, he, his, his family originally was, of course, he's Aragonese, uh, but yeah, he doesn't doesn't live there any longer. Okay, um, so we're gonna try and murder him for what he did. Now we don't have very good rates of doing this, and nobody would be willing to work with us, so very low chance of succeeding. Yeah, considerably low chance of succeeding. Nobody's really interested in being involved in this. Uh, very high chance that this will be revealed as well. So overall, we're probably going to fail at this, uh, which is unfortunate. Could try and increase it a little bit, you know, by changing our, uh, you know, changing our spy master over to support schemes. But it wouldn't be enough to make it where we'd do good at it, where we'd have a good chance at succeeding there. Uh, how could Queen Edict share her bed with another? How could she betray me like this? Perhaps I'll never know her reasons, but there seems to be no doubt about her guilt. So we can say, my love, I beg of you, let this folly end. And then we can demand that she ends it. Or we consider divorcing her. Uh, we're going to say this here. We're going to get a strong hook on her. If she agrees. Uh, we'll lose the unfaithful opinion towards her. And they'll stop being lovers as well. So yeah, we'll do that. Uh, she remains still and silent as I plead for her love, tears trailing down her cheeks, but when she finally speaks, her words are not what I expected. I never wanted to hurt you, but for that I am sorry, but I cannot deny my feelings for Nico. What we have, nothing else compares to it, not even you. I offer you my heart and you throw it away. This is so messed up, man. <laughs> I feel like she should die now. We should just uh, eliminate her. Yeah, I feel like that would be the best, though of course that would result in... And Princess Mary here uh, becoming the Duchess there, and yeah, that would not uh, that not be uh, the best result from this overall. Okay, well, hmm, I'm wondering if we can't force her vassalization. I don't remember if you can do that uh, with a hook. If we'd be able to use a hook to force her vassalization, I want to say you can, but I might be mistaken about that. Now we don't even have the option to to offer her vassalization uh, here because she's at war. She wouldn't accept it anyways, though. So yeah, I feel like maybe we should eliminate her. She broke our heart, man. And we have like no chance of succeeding at eliminating her lover. And our cousin was slain in battle. But yeah, overall, Prince, poor Prince Adam, man. Like in the ways of, of love, things have not gone well for this character. I feel really bad for him. Uh, but this is unfortunately going to be the end of the episode, guys. Uh, we're, we're about to finish up this siege. I guess we can take a look and see how much that impacts it. We're at 41%. Uh, so we're going to want to move to you know, maybe one of these mountain provinces here. Maybe go to the plains there so we don't have to. Well, we'd take attrition if we did that. I guess we'll go here. Siege it in that province. But overall, still uh, nowhere near enough to get the war uh, finished. But I'm hoping that this battle here will end it uh, when we get that done. Uh, that'll be pretty close to getting it when you combine it with this siege here that uh, between those two that'll be enough for us to end this conflict against Scotland and then after that we'd have to go to war here in Ireland since we'll have uh, you know we'll have treaties with both Wales and Scotland so that's really gonna be the only other option unless we wanted to advance our lands in France I, I just feel really bad for Prince Adam I feel like you know when it comes to love man he's just continually having heartbreak uh, so Kind of disappointed for him. And just the way his wife has treated him. And why is she all beat up? Who beat her up like that? <laughs> I know we didn't do that. Adam would never do such a thing. 
Uh, but yeah, she's all beat up maybe from battle or something like that. Uh, but yeah, she's not doing so well. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have to unfortunately end the episode here. Really kind of uh, on the fence about what to do with this situation. It's just ugly overall. Uh, and there's no... Uh, I don't want to give up Brittany. Uh, which, yeah, if we if we just divorced her, then we're essentially giving Brittany up. Uh, so... A lot of choices we could do there, none of them good. Uh, but I do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode. And thanks for watching.